In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I got my three internships in electrical engineering. And I'm gonna keep this very short because it's really this straightforward concept. There's two straightforward concepts that I want you to focus on. Now, the biggest complaint I get with people not being able to get the first internship is saying, hey, Ali, uh, most employers have preference for people who have done an internship before. So if I don't have an internship, I don't have any experience, how am I gonna attract these recruiters? Now, let's break this down using first principles. Why is a previous internship desirable for an employer? Why is it so nice to have an internship on there? Because yes, it shows that you can complete an internship and be there, but what it actually shows is real skills, right? That's what the experience entails, is you have a skill that you're able to employ to get something done. So now if you don't have your first internship, you have to ask yourself, what can I do that on my resume looks like an internship in that I am still doing skills, I am still learning, I'm still achieving something, and that's something I can talk to when I go approach a recruiter. And this was the case for me in my first internship is when I was interviewed for that, and, and even before I got the interview, I was like in this long career fair booth, and by the time I got to speak to the person, I was basically talking about a CubeSat project that I was doing on the side, and that was totally unpaid, like out of my own free time. There was this lab in my school at the time that undergrads would just get together and tinker around with electronics and try to build small satellites and launch them into space, and, and many universities have labs like this, whether it's like, robotics or automotive or whatever or space whatever it is you're interested in but basically by being engaged in that and having an active role uh, I basically was able to emulate on my resume what would look like an internship because in reality I was learning skills I was building electronics I was designing circuit boards uh, I was building antennas I was testing them I was out at like 3 a.m. in the Buffalo cold weather. So you want to take a real good look at the school you're attending and see what undergraduate opportunities are there. And those basically break into two. One is undergraduate research. So you could go to professors and say, hey, I am free labor, I'm an undergrad, uh, I want to work with you. And then you can filter by the professors who are doing research in areas that you're interested in. And that's one option. But the other option is to look at like what projects or clubs are going on where you can go and play an active participating role and basically by that you'll build skills, put that on your resume, and then you significantly increase the likelihood of getting your first internship. That takes care of the skill part, okay? Now the second half of this is the networking. And this is very important as an undergrad is now that you've gained some skills, you want to show them off, right? You want to go and get people to notice your skills. And for me, networking is a combination of things. There's like the virtual online, which is like something like LinkedIn, making a really nice LinkedIn profile, making a nice Indeed profile and applying for these things online. But also you want to be able to go in person and attend like job fairs, attend like societies. Like in my school, there was like a uh, society of mechanical engineers, like electrical engineers. There was society of Hispanic engineers. I, I'm not Hispanic, I still went and they were very nice to me and welcoming. Uh, there's society of black engineers, there's society of like so many different societies where if you just basically go show up and participate, engage in the events, and not just go with the mindset of, oh, what am I getting from this? But no, the mindset of, hey, I just want to hang out, spend time with you guys and learn um, and, and see if I can contribute anything. For example, for me, like in the society of Hispanic professional engineers, uh, we would basically go to the downtown area in my city and clean, we would host events, we would do all these things, which I genuinely enjoyed, and as a result, from that, I was able to attend some of the networking events, which um, got me some opportunities later down the line. But they have to go into that order. You first have to build skills, then you have to market them. Because if you don't market yourself and if you don't showcase yourself through like a really nice resume and whatnot, uh, nobody else will. If you don't promote yourself, nobody else is gonna promote you. And especially now with things becoming very competitive, um, but there's still plenty of jobs. I would say there's more jobs now than ever for engineering, especially electrical engineering. So as long as you know what you're doing, as long as you're building skills and learning how to show them off, uh, you should be in really good shape. Now to summarize, you need to build real skills. Don't worry too much about grades. Just make sure your GPA is like nice enough where you're not like failing. Um, because em employers are far more interested in your projects and experiences when you can accomplish uh, rather than your grades. At least for me, if I were to hire you right now, the very first thing I'm gonna ask you is not your grades, I'm gonna say, what have you worked on? What have you built? What do you have to show for all the time you've um, gone to college, including attending classes? Now, once you do get that first internship and you really like it, you want to increase the chances of converting it to a full-time job. And lucky for you, I made a video on that, so you can just watch it here. Peace, love.